Let's say you just finished going through the whole ordeal of getting your live stream up and running and online, and you're pretty happy with how it turned out. You sigh with a sense of satisfaction, and then someone asks you, hey, can we put the camera feeds up on the TVs in the lobby? Or, can we put the video up on the projectors during baptism? In this video, I'm going to show you some solutions for distributing your video locally. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. As more and more people are implementing video systems for live streaming, it actually opens up a lot of possibilities of different things you can do with that video. And one of those is distributing video to other parts of your building. I'm going to talk about three aspects of video distribution. How to integrate your video system with your projector, how to distribute video nearby to a handful of TVs, and finally, how to send video to lots of destinations that may be quite some distance away. Now these aren't the only solutions out there, but they are ones that I've found to work reliably. When it comes to video distribution, there is a balance between how much you spend and how much time you want to spend troubleshooting and rebooting and making the system work. This probably applies to a lot of things in AV, but I've found it to be especially true when it comes to distribution. First, let's talk about how to integrate your video and projection system and what that could look like. You'll find if you've installed a true video switcher like the Blackmagic Design's ATEM switchers, they have an aux output. The aux outputs on your switcher are outputs that you can route any input to, and it's not affected by what you're mixing on the program bus of the switcher. That input will stay assigned to the aux output until you assign it something else. So if you send your Lyrics computer into your video switcher and feed your projectors from an aux output, you can leave your Lyrics computer routed to the projectors while still using that computer feed in your video mix when it's needed. Another advantage to this setup is if you ever want to send a video camera to your projectors, just route a camera to the aux and you've got a camera on your projectors. This is not how I'd recommend doing iMag where you always have cameras on your screens, but if you just need an occasional camera shot for something like baptisms or a children's moment, anything where you just need to momentarily give people a better view, this is a great way to do it. Next, let's talk about how to send your video to a lot of different places. The first step will be to add an SDI distributor to the output of your switcher. These come in different sizes and configurations, but common ones are 1 to 6 or 1 to 8. This will let you send your video output to your live stream encoder like you've been doing, but now you can also send it to another device for recording, like a record deck. SDI cables can run up to 300 feet, so if you have some TVs nearby, for instance in the lobby of your meeting space, you could feed those right from your SDI distributor. Just put a simple SDI to HDMI converter at the TV and you're ready to go. Now the final distribution method I'm going to talk about is when you need a solution to send your video to a lot of destinations and over longer distances. And that is using an RF modulator. This probably deserves a video of its own because setting up a cable TV system is a bit more involved, but the beauty of these systems is that once it's set up and installed, it just works. You don't need any special equipment at the TVs, it tunes the channel like you would any cable TV broadcast, and that makes it really cost effective to expand to any number of TVs you want to distribute your video to. We have TVs in rooms throughout our building that receive our video feed and even send it to a nearby building through an underground pipe. To create a system like this, you start with an RF modulator like the ZV Pro 810, which takes an HDMI input and creates an RF cable TV channel on its output. Depending on the size of your system, you may need to run that into an amplifier, and then you use a series of splitters to distribute the signal to all your TVs. Where the installation gets a bit involved is you need to calculate the power output from your amplifier based on the power loss you'll get over the lengths of your cables, and from each splitter, and then use attenuators where needed to make sure you get the right amount of power to each TV. If that seems scary to you, it's probably time to contact an integrator to help you out with the install. Hey, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. My next video is going to be about the AJA UTAP. It's 2018 and some new products are coming on the market for streaming, and this has become my new favorite video interface. So I'm going to walk you through all the ins and outs of streaming with the UTAP. Until next time, bye.